street of lagos yesterday nigerians take turn to express their grief on the state of the nation insecurity as gunmen kidnapped channel tv reporter in rivers and demand 30 million naira ransom electricity power minister apologizes to nigerians that uh, for putting the blame on them for um, plugging in their refrigerator due to power outage and these are many more of the news we are set to take with you today but before we go into all that we have for you today let's go on a quick break and we will be right back <laughs> share their reactions on the state of the nation they talk about the ad economy and how difficult it has been so far since the fuel subsidy remover beyond that we discover that certain areas in ibejuleki and uh, certain filling station in ibejuleki are not selling uh, petrol to um, jerry cans those that are going into the fuel station to get their fuel in jerry cans they are not selling to these people they only sell to those that are mobile and we are wondering have we gone to a stage where we are now giving preferential treatment treating those that do not have a car less than those that has a car so we gathered quite a number of uh, information yesterday we gathered quite a number of reactions yesterday which will be in display for you to hear from nigerians themselves so while we wait for the video to come in display we would like to ask very uh, we, have, we would like to ask all of our viewers what is your own personal perspective of this hike in price of goods and services this is not the only things nigerian react, reacted to they also reacted to the fact that why can't we get equal rights equal um, um equal treatment with with those that has a car uh, at the first station with those that has a car and those that do not have a car why can't we get equal treatment so we'd like to we would like that you see nigerians reaction to this development let's see uh, no, we are Nigeria now. We will. So we enter there. We have to settle some people can get there. So you mean that you have to settle them now before you get any amount of what you want to get? So this settlement is going to cost like how much? Uh, 500, 1000. Wow, are you serious? So will this, not, will this not affect your business? It will, but we need a friend. So personally, how are you taking it? Because you mentioned that not having a car is a big problem in this country. So personally, how are you feeling like? Is it not like they are segregating people that don't have car from people that have, have car? Maybe they are giving more importance to people that have car to those that want to buy in Jerry can to run their business. How are you feeling personally as a businessman? Mm. Well, everything is all about business. They to run a business. You need to just put that income can make it everything. Let everybody be equal. So they are separating the rich from the poor. So if everybody is equal, everything will work well. All right, finally, um you said you use this for to run your business. How has this issue of poor boiling been affecting your business so far? Uh, badly. And it was never isn't even bring light. So right now, before we are selling good back up for six hundred seven. No, good bed is one thousand one five. Wow. So we are just managing. And after we have more than seven or fifteen workers before, but we will be there to seven or eight because of the cost of the fuel. So I beg, not vex. One last question: This issue of the uh, the way the economy be. What is your own personal opinion? If you are privileged to see the Mr. President, now what would you have said as an individual, as a citizen of Nigeria? <laughs> no, no, I, want, I just wanted to air your opinion, personal opinion. Uh, yeah, we don't have presidents. <laughs> we don't have presidents. Serious, we don't have presidents. If I meet president one on one, oh my guy, oh boy, go do block you. <laughs> Serious, we don't have presidents. I don't, I don't even really about that. All right. Thank you so much for honoring the interview. God bless you. All right, as you have heard for yourself. 
create that conversation how difficult it has been for people to cope and survive in this part of the world according to that man he said his organization he had about 15 workers before now he had cut down costs to seven workers just so they can fruit some things but uh, beyond that i also want you to note that he said before he could get fuel in his jerry can he has to pay certain amount of money now i want to ask who made this policy because we went out and we saw for ourselves that they even re they, they even wrote it in uh, um they even wrote it uh, in their fuel tank that no one is that they are not permitted to sell for jerry cans who made this policy and why is this policy so but amidst the many interview we had yesterday one of which shocked us yesterday was the one that will be displayed to you like i mean who goes to a fuel station to fuel his generator tank this one shocked us so very quickly let's have the video so we have someone here to be interviewed so we all got we i beg not the expressing be your Okay, we see say you enter fuel station now with this um uh, waiting that they call them again. Tank. Okay, we see say you enter fuel filling station with this tank. And we see say some people they enter with Jerry can, they're not self where for them. So waiting be this one are the new updates. She now waiting that they take self where be this again. Yeah, see that this one that they sell for they don't feel self for keg. See now if I pay kai tank like this, they'll sell for them. So me myself pay go as the other they'll sell before they sell for me. So Okay, I beg you if you tell us the reason why it be like this. I don't even know the reason now. That's the police station. I don't know the reason why they sell for the keg now, the tank now. When they sell for keg, they sell for tank. So me, I don't know the reason. Okay, so okay. So we hear say people where they say um people where they know they say for inside Jerry can say now because they, they resell them and now why did they do this one? But we won't ask because some people will say they say for them with Jerry can they say they collect money for their hand. Should they collect money for your hand for this no, one? No, no, they don't say collect money for my hand for this one. Okay. So you feel give us updates for how much they say they sell one liter of way? Uh which I see for them and six sixty. Okay. So now the amount where they sell be that yeah. nobody say they change them as they see the things on the expensive. Yeah. All right now. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, you have seen for yourself. This is a new update in this part of the world where people have to go to their to fuel station to fuel their generator tank just so they can use it for other commercial activities. So we are leaving this to our dear viewers. What is your take on this? Is this right? If you had been a person who went to the fuel station too you know to get fuel in jerry can and they are telling you that you cannot get fuel in jerry can except for if you come with your generator tank considering the stress that you will have to go through in ensuring in, in bringing your generator tank to the fuel station will you not feel bad as a person it is quite understandable that there are some people who get fuel um, um who get fuel in their uh, jerry cans they go to fuel station with their big jerry cans to resell it but at the same time we should consider that it is because there are no employment opportunities there are no opportunities around that's why a lot of people are delving into other activities just to put food on their table we can understand this but at the same time it is it is it is better if they explain to nigerians why they are not doing this rather than just moving into every fuel station and you discover that you cannot get fuel in your jerry can except for if you have a car even if you have a car they don't even sell for you if you, you have bring out your um jerry can so we'll keep our fingers crossed and give you more updates on how fueling has been affecting a lot of businesses on the street of lagos moving on to the next story insecurity gunmen kidnapped channel tv reporter in rivers demand for 30 million naira ransom gunmen kidnapped a journalist and reporter with channel television mr joshua rugas at his residence in rumosi in obio akboi local government area of river state on thursday night Rogers, who covers the River State Government House for his organization, was reportedly trailed after he closed from work to his residence. The miscreants accosted him before he alighted from his car, pointed a gun at him and wished him, along with his vehicle, off to an unknown destination at 9 p.m. A source who said he doesn't want his name mentioned said the reporter had earlier covered an event in Indoni in the Ogba Egbe Mandoni local government area of the state where Governor Simino Lai Fubara inaugurated a primary health care center.
So this is how bad insecurity is becoming in this part of the world. I mean, mm -hmm. someone will just go out for to perform his daily activities. And before you know it, you discover that this person is nowhere to, to be found. All, all, in the, all because they have gone out to seek their daily bread. And it is making us to ask questions, what is happening? Just last week, we, we, uh, a student of, um, of Abia State University was kidnapped. He has regained his freedom after ransom was paid another student in uh, uh, in this, another state like that I, I can't i can't really recall the name but this student was also kidnapped on her way to a friend's father's burial ceremony she was kidnapped and these people demanded for 10 million naira as ransom and on the long run they beat it down to 2 million naira before this girl was released now if we cannot guarantee that our safety if, if our safety is not guaranteed while going about our day to day activities how are we that we are even safe in our homes and it is bringing us to ask the question what is the federal government doing on the case of insecurity in nigeria what are they doing well when the cardinal state students were, kid were, were kidnapped weeks ago we were all clamoring on how they would be relieved these people even put a call through to the family of the student and and uh, and they demanded for a billion naira uh, uh, they be demanded for for their ransom in trillions no, no longer in billions. And on the long run, these children were released. We don't have, we are not given, we are not uh, um, given enough information as to what the federal government is doing to curb insecurity. This month, make it a decade that the Chibok girls were kidnapped. Out of the over 200 Chibok girls that were kidnapped, only a hundred of them were released. And they weren't even released at um, um they weren't released at uh, uh, immediately after some of them were released released three years after four years after and 10 years down the line some of these girls are still in the custody of these people and yesterday we we watched um, um one of the advocates for bring back our girls the one of, one of the advocates for bring back our girl the person of dr aisha oye Bode. she granted an interview on your view yesterday where she was talking about the new um the new song in the mouth of people like what well, she was talking about those girls that are yet to be released and their parents are reaching out to her on what they are going to do to get back their girls 10 years after Yet, the federal government is not saying anything about these girls. We don't even know where they are. Some of these girls are not even wishing to come, before, to come back home because they are married, not married. They have been given out to these Boko Haram men. They have, they have given birth to them, to, to them over there and, and we cannot even account for them. So the song in the mouth of these girls' parents now is no longer bring back our girls. It is about how are our girls faring? Where are they? Let us know how they are faring. But the federal government is no longer accountable to us on these cheaper girls. Like it happened and it just died down like that. Now, on the case of the, 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 the new situation where they could have followed up on who these bandits are, is on the case of the Cardinal State students. But they just released those students. Were they released? Were they rescued? We don't know. They were released. How were they released? If ransom was not paid, how did these children came to be? They made a show for them. Who negotiated? Who did what? They said Sheikh Gumi, the one who said the federal government should negotiate with the bandits. Sheikh Gumi was 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 brought into the police custody for question. No, not police custody. Was brought into the uh, into the Aso Rock into Aso Rock for questioning. What is the outcome of that question, questioning? Have they been following up on him to know what to know who these bandits are? To know how to pin these bandits down? That that issue just surfaced like that and it just died down. Nobody to talk about it now. Nigerians, individuals that are kidnapped in Nigeria now, they are paying ransom. Yet, these people have not been traced in any way. What are the police sector, what are the security sectors doing to ensure that insecurity is curbed? Now, somebody who has gone out to seek for his daily bread has been kidnapped. Yes, the family will be the one to pay this ransom. And that will just be the end of it. We don't know anything about who these kidnappers are. 
where they are coming from, who they are working with, how they are able to contact the family. I think it is another time we question the telecommunication industries in this in, in our country. Is there is there no since our NIN has been linked to our numbers? Is there no way we can link who we can get a link as to who this um as to who these kidnappers are? They put a call through. Can't these calls be traced? Can't this call be traced so we can know who is who? Evil acts in this country. So as we are putting the blame on the on the security sector, we should also consider our tech, uh, our telecommunication sector. What are they doing to work together, to work in alliance with the security sector to put an end to insecurity? This is sad that we cannot go about our daily activities safe and sound, that we'll leave our house and come back safely. So we'll keep our fingers crossed and see the outcome of this kidnapping. Moving on to the next story. Electricity power minister apologizes to Nigerians. So last week, um, the power minister, the person of Adelabu, he said that Nigerians are are becoming overindulged because they are spending so much on power they are they, they now they, because they are paying for what the, the, the electricity they are using they are leaving their freezers on you know the attack was on the consumer but now he has come back to eat his vomit apologizing to nigerians the minister of power adebayo adelabu has apologized to nigerians for saying that they keep free, freezers on for days due to low electricity tariff Anything we have said that are considered offensive, we are sorry about that. Adelabu said, with slight remorse on channels, televisions, politics today on Thursday. The minister had come under fire by many Nigerians in the last one week for his comment, which was considered offensive. So here he is apologizing to Nigeria for what he has said. I think it is high time our... Our leaders, you know, when we, when we talk about our leaders, we are not looking at Mr. President alone, but every leader in every sector. Whether you are a leader in the church, in the mosque, in politics, in business, and what have you. It is high time our leaders learn good communication skills. When you are appointed in, in a position, it is, it is expected of you to know what to say at every point in time. Because as of now, Nigerians generally are angry. And you cannot just come and say anything. You cannot just come and say anything to them and expect to go scotry. Nah, it doesn't work that way. So like um, um, over uh, about weeks ago at the various ceremony of the Uyghurs, we saw that our leaders, our, some senators were throwing jibes at each other at a function like that. Now, this is still on the issue of not knowing what to say at events. And also, we feel like our um, leaders are not putting some things into cognizance. Things such as brand building. As a leader, you should have a PR person who teaches you. I think the essence of the a PR person is to help you to build your image out there. The image that people perceive you as out there is very, very important. And the duty of those PR persons is to tell you that, okay, this event you are going to, these are the things you are expected to say, these are the things you should not say, regardless of what people say to you, you have to maintain this image. They have to see you as this, these are the thing, this is the image you are expected to see you as. So it is this person that coordinates how they react to happenings, that they don't just say anything they want to say. So I think it is high time that these people just, they, they put all of these things in place. Get a PR person. If your PR person is not functioning, get another one. So you can build the right image before the people you are ruling. So he has apologized now. Nigerians, we never take him serious. Because there is this thing about integrity. Integrity is learning to keep to your words. Learning to maintain a good image. Learning to maintain the right image before um, uh, um before the people you are lording over so 
if you don't maintain the right image before them, it will be difficult for the people you are lording over to take you serious. So that's just that's just the summary. So moving on to the next story. World news. Libya emerges Africa's highest oil producer as Nigerian's output drops 6.8 to 1.23 metric barrel per day. Let's see the news in details. Libya has emerged as the highest crude oil producer in Africa, following the drop of Nigeria's output by 6.8% to 1.23 million barrels per day in March 2024, from 1.32 barrel per day in February 2024. On the other hand, Libya's oil output rose by 5.4% for to 1.236 million barrel per day in March 2024 from 1.173 million according to the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC. So it is so sad that the giant of Africa, the giant of Africa is now becoming an ant. And this comes back to production for any country to thrive they have to produce and i think we nigeria spent more energy over the years on taking out on taking out on taking out they don't they take out the crude and it is in the crude that it is in the crude oil that you get to that you get to by the time the crude oil is processed you get a lot of things and you 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 get a lot of a lot of other things that that will enhance productivity in the country once upon a time nigeria exports their crude oil they export their crude oil to ghana but currently as we speak ghanaians has their own crude they don't depend on us again once upon a time ghana depend on us for electricity but currently, as we speak, Ghana, Ghana is <laughs> Ghana is now on their own electricity wise. So it shows the level of the level of um, um, the level of lack we are experiencing in the country. And if a country moves from production to liability, it is going to bring a whole lot of people not to put, not to trust in that country again. They will relegate that country to the floor. And we see that. Um, um, the Senegal too. They, were, they are complaining of the same thing that if they export their crude, their raw materials, they export it hundred percent, and the only percentage that is coming into them is just one percent. The African countries are losing their glory, and it is high time that our leaders arise to do the needful. What is the needful that is expected or expected of them? They should improve on production. We see all of this thing that we are talking about naira mutilation. I'm sorry, naira appreciate uh, appreciation. The fact the fact that naira is still one thousand two hundred plus to a dollar is still demeaning to our economy. It is still very very demeaning to our economy. We need to improve on production, improve on the things that we can produce that we circulate around the country. Then we can extend it to taking it out of the country. This is how we can improve. And it good thumbs, it thumbs up to Dan Gote, who is working on, who is working on production back to back. And if we the federal government can invest on mind uh, on, on, on product production uh, mining industries like this, it is going to boost our economy. It is also going to attract foreign investors into this part of the world. But if they keep on going back and forth on things they are not supposed to channel their energy on. We are not sorry to say that this country needs to do better. This country needs to do better in the aspect of production. Moving on to the last story to be reviewed with you. Update on the death of the Nollywood actor who died two days ago, the person of Junior Pope. One of the survivors said Fanta and Money Spray was all that saved his life. Let's look at the news in details. More reports have emerged concerning 
The boat mishap that claimed the life of a famed Nollywood star, John Paul Odunwodu, a.k.a. Junior Pope. One of the survivors of the tragic boat mishap, actor T.C. Okafor, has recounted how he escaped death by the whiskers, saying pouring Fanta and money into the Anam River saved his life. So we are going to have a video in display very soon on what's the uh, on the live chat that this particular actor actor tc okafo said concerning how his life was um how, how his life was rescued from death by mere pouring fanta and money into the anam river saved his life probably he used this to appease the gods of the river and that was how he was rescued very quickly let's have the video on display why do me this thing? So I did for that front. He was, they were making a video. And as they make everybody pull phone for pocket, make everybody pull phone for pockets. The DOP was wearing a jacket and the director was wearing a life jacket. Only two of them wear life jackets. So put them down. Who can they go? But before we I entered the boat, I carried my boat. First thing Junior come asked me to, what did they do? I can't say there was a water people. I know the feet pass without sharing something. I don't give them fanta bed. I don't want any bad thing to happen to me. I know like what I thought. He said, not true, not true. He went and they sit down. That and we don't go. JP don't make video. The boat guy was wearing an earpiece. I think he was playing the music and JP was doing video. So he was focusing for his head to come out on the video. And that was in the front. I see one smoking. These people with the fishermen. At the time I say see him. This thing like can you like this now, where they move. The can you, that guy, if he get experience, he for just do like this, but he not get the experience. The first thing we in jam the last point of the can you, the boat. Some so But because I was holding that rope, where we say boat packed for, for dry ground, where the hold are for ground, now that rope, now I hold, they save that girl, Scooby Doo girl. What are they say, with me and there, they push them off. See me when they enter swimming pool and no sabi swim. Nothing, nothing. That was it. Was rescued was because he offered Fanta and money spring to the gods. Um, this is quite funny. At the same time, it is not a good time to laugh at some jokes. But then, just maybe if you try this, you'll be rescued. But we still hope that the body of the remaining persons be found from this accident at on, on the Anam River. This is the end of the newspaper review at Prime Media TV. And before we leave the studio today, we'd like that you follow us on all our social media platforms. On Facebook, we are Prime Media TV. On Instagram and TikTok, Prime Media Studio. On the website, we are enginespeak.com. And you can as well follow us on YouTube at Engine Speak. I am Ayo. Until I come your way again, do have a great day.